In the following video, you will learn how to use Photoshop, Premiere Pro, and After Effects to line up, create, edit, and produce a montage and a thumbnail for uploading to YouTube. Okay, so getting straight into the Bandicam setup. Basically, I like to use this. It doesn't use much of your GPU, and you can get really high quality footage without losing any of the data. So, let's get into this. Um, click on general, just set this to wherever you want your videos to be saved. Under the video tab, make sure you click settings. Change this up to 100 if you want full quality. Set all the audio settings to max or whatever your microphone is capable of. I have a pretty crappy mic, I just set it up. It makes it sound a little clearer, I guess. Set your quality to 100 for sure though, that will be the game changer. FPS 60 for games, uh, don't really do anything higher than that. And click these three dots next to it. Make sure this is on constant frame rate. If this is not, your audio will be out of time with the video and it will take you forever and be basically impossible to time it up. So once everything's like that, you're ready to record. Okay, so here we are in Premiere and what you're gonna wanna do is you have your clips and your music. So drag in one of your clips, doesn't really matter, just drag one into the timeline. Click settings, sequence settings, and make sure this is set to the same frame rate and quality as your video. Keep this audio here and drag in your music below it. Now all you need to do is, you can mess around doing whatever you want, but basically drag to the highlight of your clips and try to line them up with the music as best you can. I'll be back once I've done that. Okay, so I have lined up some clips with the audio, including this little extra piece of the bus flying, you can find this on YouTube, you can download it, it's free. Um, so we have the clips, this is, what it this is what it's looking like now. Okay, so it's pretty plain right now, but once you move all of this into After Effects, you can make it look a lot cooler and more entertaining. So how are you going to do that? So don't put that many effects on it when you're in Premiere, by the way. It'll just load it up, and a lot of them don't actually transfer to After Effects. So what you want to do is just simply save it, save as, save it to somewhere you're going to remember. I'm just going to put it right, let's put it right in Projects, Editing Tutorial, for after effects okay make sure it's a premiere project save it that is literally it once you open up after effects you can drag in the file i'll show you okay so we've made it this far um open up a blank after effects template you don't need this pretty much just file import premiere pro project and then locate where you saved it to open it up all sequences, import audio, this is important, and just click OK. Once they all import, it, it, nothing will really show up, so just double click on whatever you named it, and here, one of the, I deleted one of these videos on accident, but I've got all the other ones, and they will just come through as you had them set up in Premiere Pro, and they should be timed up, you can test it, if not, um, I don't know, maybe you can like shuffle stuff around a bit to fix it. Um, it seems to work for me pretty much every single time. And I have another more in-depth like video that can help you out on this. Um, I'll link it, or actually I'll pop it up right here. You can click on that if you want to see how to do like fancy transitions. But what I'd recommend is like if you're going to be doing this stuff a lot, you can just make, you can make a new layer, adjustment layer, um, trim it up. Go set some animation presets. Like when you when you work on making them, you end up with a bunch. So I've got like this. I've got some cool ones. I kind of just named them random stuff. Um, email me if you actually want me to send send you these. That would probably make stuff easier for you. Um, anyways, I've got one of them here. I'll just put it on just to show you what it does. So basically, what it does is it'll tip to one side, and then it'll tip to the other side, and then it'll spin. So go to the spin area and you want to drag that to the transition. 
select the motion blur option and select it on your layer. So now it'll give you this cool like spinny, I don't know, I just like this effect, this cool like spinny blur effect. Okay, so that definitely doesn't work with that part of the video, but that's kind of besides the point. If you want to figure out like how to how to edit transitions better, check out my other video. Anyways, once you're done with After Effects, you can't exactly render it straight from here because your file size will be enormous. Like, I'm going to show you how to do it though. So click Export, Render Queue, click on Lossless, make sure it's AVI, don't change any of this stuff, change audio output to on, and I like to change 32-bit. Click OK, select this option, and you can, you can put it wherever you want to put it. Click Save, and then Render. That's all you want. I will catch you back in Premiere. All right, the final step to the, um, the setting up your video and your montage is back in Premiere. So here we have pretty much, you should have your rendered video from After Effects, which will be like 20 gigabytes. Drag it down into your project, drag it straight over into your timeline. Um, same thing again, check your sequence settings, make sure nothing got screwed up in the process. And basically, I've already done it, and I'm just going to use this already pre-edited video because um, I was making this for x 24 Carat. I will link him in the description. And basically, he bought an edit from me, so I made this for him. You guys can do that too. So, just to spice up the video once you've like already set it up and put it all together with all your transitions, like all your nice transitions like this. Um, as you can see down here, I'm clicking on them. These are little sound effects, like little whooshes and like power swishes. You can just find these on YouTube for free. This is what it sounds like before. YouTube, please do not copyright this. I'm not making money off of it. Thank you. Okay, so it's not as exciting as when you have like that whole extra element. All right, as you can see, it's just got like... It's got more vibe to it, right? It's just a little bit more interesting to watch. And my recommendation is don't put it on every single one. It'll be, get a little bit cluttered. Um, do what you want, though. Whatever sounds good to you. Like, I, I didn't put one here. Don't copyright me. Thanks. It's just, like, it's just part of the, I don't know. It's just part of the rhythm. So, basically, once you set it up in here, add your little introduction, your little outro, I put his... Um, his Instagram name right here. You can go check him out. Made it like zoom up at the end. Just like why not? And that's basically the whole thing. If you have like a logo, put it up here. You can make a logo in After Effects using keyframing. You can actually use your transition effects on it. I did that with mine. It looks like this. Yep, not that bad. I used the puppet pin tool. Google a video on that. So once you're done with this, um, click file. Up here, export it, media. And all you want to do is click on your preset. Oh, make sure your format's H.264 if you've never used this. Make sure your preset is whatever your video quality is. If I'd be doing a 1080 one, I'd make sure it's at 1080. Except this is going to give it... Nope, it's not going to give it black boxes. Never mind. Anyway, scroll down a little bit. And make sure your frame rate is what you want. Normally, I'd be doing 60. This one wasn't. Anyways, once you set up your render settings, click output name. Name it and put, select where you want it, just export it, and that is it. Let's move on to making the thumbnail. Alright, here we are in Photoshop. This is the last um this is the last step. So click file, make a new project. You can set it up, make your width 1920, height 1080, resolution 300 pixels per inch. And click nope, make this transparent transparent and click create all right now you've got your layer set up all you need now is a picture drag in your picture and select it you don't want this HD so click filter by the way you guys can customize this however you want gush and blur and gosh and gosh and I don't know how to pronounce it sorry um this looks blurry all now but like the people who are looking at it they're gonna be looking at it really really small they're gonna be looking at it like like this if they're on their phone so I'd recommend honestly doing about six like it might seem like a ton it'll look good though trust me so 
you want to add some nice text don't do the default text like please please don't do the default text I'd recommend using Berlin Sands it actually looks pretty good so let's just call this um, Fortnite now you gotta make this capital people can only read capitals for some reason Fortnite editing tutorial all right and you can do all your fancy stuff on Photoshop make it center I'm just gonna drag it until it does this select the corner hold shift and alt so it scales like so it scales without getting all like 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 this okay anyways make it bigger um put it wherever you want still in the middle all right now what you're gonna want to do is select your layer nope actually select your text change it to white select layer deselect it select layer layer style blending options um you can just copy this just copy these settings and you can do a gradient overlay that looks kind of dumb so i'm not going to do it um i like to stroke it it was not good I like to add stroke. I like to add stroke because it looks nice. And you can add a pattern overlay if you want to turn down the like amount. It okay. Anyways, once you've had your like basic setting set up, it looks like this. It looks kinda nice. I like to change Fortnite to a different color so people can read it. Don't make it red. And Okay, what you gotta do now is go on the internet and you gotta find the Fortnite Battle Royale transparent logo and some, I don't know, some cool skins. Okay, so put it on your picture and bam, you have you have a nice a nice thumbnail. It looks pretty sweet. What you can do to make it look better is select your character. You can go into the layer, layer style, and do whatever you want with it. Like, just something to make it pop. So let's do an outer glow. Okay, it's white. It it kind of blends a little bit. Nope, don't touch, don't touch that. Turn up the spread. All right, I'm gonna turn up the size actually. Ooh, that's bad. Turn up a little bit. A little bit, but not too much. Right about there. What'll make this look cool? Maybe the same color as this. Ooh, that's kind of cool. All right, and there you have it. That is how you make a thumbnail. Saving it's super easy. Just file, not export. You will get confused. Save as. Go to where you want to save it. Click this. JPEG, the top one. Or PNG if you want a background. Here. Hey, look at that. It's all my thumbnails. That's kind of funny. Save it. Name it whatever you want. Save. That's literally it. Alright, so I hope this helped you out a lot. And... Good luck in the future creating edits. Like this video if you enjoyed. Also, um, be sure to email me if you want those templates. Okay? I will leave it right in the description. Thank you.